What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you the 3 methods that you can use in order to make the enemy AIs or AIs in general sense deep learning. It's going to be very easy to follow so let's get started. But first, if you are serious about learning and making your first game in Unreal Engine 5, join my Unreal Club. Inside, you will be able to download entire private files from my tutorials, enter private meetings and webinars with industry experts, access exclusive ebooks packed with the best tricks, get powerful asset frameworks to speed up your blueprints, and much more. The link is in the description. With that said, let's continue with the video. Alright, so. What I'm going to do is create a simple blueprint class of type character, call it BP underscore AI, open this up, and you set the mesh to be something as many simple, okay? Just as an example, of course, if you already have a enemy AI or AI in general that you want to use, you can go ahead and open that up, but I'm going to be using this one as an example. So let me go ahead and just drag this onto the level let me kind of make it face this way and that's it so i'm going to be showing you three ways in which you can use um you know this method to make the ai see the player or whatever it is right any other target and then you know execute the logic that you want so for example start to chase the player and so on now the methods that are going to be covering going to be the most popular ones out there and the most optimal ones for you guys uh, from beginners to intermediate to experts it doesn't matter okay so let's get started with the first one which is the pawn sensing now the pawn sensing is a component that we can simply add into our ai blueprints so let's search for pawn sensing add this over here and boom as you can see we have a whole bunch of gizmos in the viewport and if we selected a bunch of details for our perception system so for example, the hearing threshold, the sight radius, the visual angle, and a whole bunch of stuff, right? So for example, we're gonna change the angle to like 55 or 70, whatever it is, change the sight radius, so it's a bit less, so it's a bit more, you know, and you start to customize everything, both for sight and hearing. And it's super easy to use this because it's just a simple component that we can add, right? As you can see, if I select this, if the player enters in this area over here, well, the enemy will see it and how can we execute any code when you know the player enters in this area we're super simple it has some events down over here for example the on c pawn so when the enemy ai sees a pawn it will execute this event over here and then we can say okay print and then something as c player and if i go ahead and press play and i go and move a bit forwards so the AI can see me, we can see C player on the top left of the screen, printing, and that's it. So it's super easy to use this pawn sensing. I recommend it a lot. It's just straightforward, it's simple to use and learn from, and I mean, it works very well most of the time. All right, so I just recommend it a lot. Uh, cool, so let's go ahead and delete that. I recommend pawn sensing, just remember that and maybe practice it for a bit. Now, the next method that I want to show you guys is going to be also a component and this is going to be the AI perception. This is pretty much identical to the pawn sensing but a bit more advanced. Now this was originally made for C++ but they did expose many of their features into blueprints so we can use it over here. And as you can see we can add different senses. So we can add a number of senses into this array list and for example we want to add sight or hearing or whatever it is so we could put for example sight expand this and once again very similar to the pawn sensing we can customize all the parameters for example the sight radius the visual angle and you know all this stuff um the only downside with this compared to the pawn sensing is that we don't see a visual representation of the perception on the level right if i go here as you can see boom there's nothing to visualize his area, right? That's one of the downsides from pawn sensing, but AI perception is simply a bit more advanced. You have more things to customize, you can split things into different senses, so it's just a bit more advanced, but of course, a bit more limited on the visual side. So, it's a bit harder to work with, right? But of course, you can get more out of it. Now, once again, you have all of the events over here. So on target perception of data, you can just check 
for the actor uh, entering on the vision. So I could print once again, player C or C player or whatever. And if I go in front of him, you will see this appear. I managed to make it appear. Now one thing, okay, yes. So I, I nearly missed one of the most uh, important things. First of all, do this. Now the, the reason why it's not working is that we need a stimulus. Now a stimulus is something that we can detect. In this case, the player is going to be the actor that we want to detect, but there's a problem. We don't know that. So what we need to do is open up the third person catch blueprint or whatever, you know, targets you want to be able to, they had to see. And when I add this thing called the AI perception stimuli source, and yes, you say auto register as source. And then we can put like, for example, for the um, site and that's it. Now the AI will be able to detect the player. Um, there's a couple things that you can do to customize this. Um, as you can see, you can change the, the, the specific type of sense. You can even just make it as you know, universal. So it doesn't matter what sense it is. It will just work if you live like this. And of course, over here, we have to do one thing which is very important, which is to take all of these options. Okay, because if not, you will need to use this system in C++. So just enable this. And now you can see that when we go to the player, we see player C. Um, and if you didn't see it, there we go. Here it is. We just go again and it's just working. Okay, so very important. You have to add this component and then enable those three check bars. And that's it. Okay, so this is a bit more, um, you know, uh, advanced as you can see. We have like things as the age, expression age, strength, so much location, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, so it's just a bit more advanced, but a bit harder to uh, control right so it's up to you but there we go that's another very uh, common method that I, for example i used in my rpg series and so on all right so for the very last method this is going to be the most basic one okay this is seen as very basic but <laughs> for a lot of cases it's a very good solution and it involves a simple collision trigger so if i add a sphere collision name this trigger and simply make this like a bit bigger. That's it. <laughs> this is our trigger. If the player enters in this area, we will simply just start chasing him. It's super simple, but it works. I mean, it really depends the thing that you want for the AI. It's going to be intelligent and to see, to lose you, whatever. But this just works. So just make sure that you have the collision preset as overlap. So the AI can go, sorry, the player can go inside, but still be detected. And then you have the on component begin and end overlap. So on the begin, for example, you can say print and then, you know, C player. And when I enter, I get C player. Very simple, but effective at the same time. So ultimately, it just depends on what you want to go ahead and use. Right. And I recommend all of these three systems. Now, in my case, pawn sensing. It's just the best one. You can see a visual representation is more than enough for a lot of features and it just works super good. The stimuli and the perception requires a bit more of a setup. And then also there's not visual representation, but it gives you more parameters to play around with. And then of course this last one just goes ahead and you know, it's just you enter into a trigger or you exit. So super simple, but a bit too basic for many types of AI. So at the end, just play around with the three of them and see what you prefer. But as a recommendation, I recommend you spawn sensing. Not gonna lie. So with that said, guys, if you found this video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Join my Unreal Club if you are serious about learning Unreal 5. And now, yes, so I'll say bye bye.